Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be having a look at the multiple choice questions from the British Physics Olympiads Senior Challenge from 2016. As always, these are not just uh, these are not the official solutions, but just my solutions. So if you want to have a look at the official mark scheme and the British Physics Olympiads website, I've given a link in the description of this video. Okay, well let's get started with uh, those solutions. So looking at the first questions it's one of my favorite topics which is dimensional analysis what are the correct dimensions for energy in terms of mass length and time as always we're going to pick our favorite formula for energy my personal one is the formula for kinetic energy so just here on the side I'm going to write the formula for kinetic energy which is a half Ooh, what's happening here let's try that again a half m v squared the half has no dimensions it is just a number the uh, mass well that has the dimensions of mass which are normally written m or bracket m if you wish multiplied by the dimensions of speed which are length divided by time or the dimensions of length divided by the dimensions of time but in this case it is squared so it's going to be l squared t squared like that so the correct answer will be c just like that now for the next question we'll be talking about a um, about fluid uh, dynamics which is or fluid mechanics in this case which is one of my favorite topics we're going to be looking at an incompressible liquid flow which flows through a pipe and I'm going to be talking about this new quantity here known as the rate of flow that we haven't really talked of, talked about much before but anyways we have uh, an incompressible liquid flowing through a pipe of a circular cross section which narrows at some point along its length the diameter is going to reduce to a third of its original diameter so this means that this um, quantity over here the diameter will be a third of the original we're given that the rate of flow of the liquid on the on the left is six meters cubed s to the power of minus one and the speed is two meters per second well what is the rate of flow of the liquid the rate of flow i'm going to write this over here on the side so the rate of flow is defined and it's normally given the symbol q and you can see i've actually uh, um, written it over here it is defined as the area multiplied by the speed now due to something known as the continuity equation the rate of flow is conserved when uh, you have an incompressible liquid flow which uh, flows through a pipe so in practice this means that the rate of flow in this part will be the same as the rate of flow in the narrower part so q1 will be equal to q2 in practice this means that the first area multiplied by the first speed will be equal to the second area multiplied by the second speed of the flow okay so anyways back to the question what is the rate of flow of the liquid in the narrow section of the tube well we're given that the rate of flow on the left is six so q is six meters cubed s to the power of minus one on the left so it's going to be six as well on the right due to this continuity equation which uh, which i've just described over here so the correct answer is d now let's have a look at the next question so in figure one the speed of the liquid flow for the narrow tube so what we need to do is we need to find the speed now we know that the rate of flow is uh, is uh, is six and um, that will remain constant we don't know the original diameter all we know is that the diameter reduces to a third of its original and we know that on the left the speed is two meters per second so two meters 
per second. But how much will it actually change? Well, let's think about it. So Q is in general equal to A times V. Well, if, um, if that is the case, if Q remains constant, if the diameter reduces to a third of its original, how does the area depend on the diameter? So Q will be equal to, let's assume that this is a, um, well, it actually says that it's a circular cross-sectional area. I'm just going to underline this like so, which means that the area will be given by pi r squared, which is pi d over 2, like that. And that has been um, squared like this. And um, this multiplied by the velocity. So if the diameter will be reducing by a third, we're going to need to, so if d decreases by a third, we're going to have an additional factor of 3 down here. So rather than uh, just d over 2, what we're going to say is that for the uh, new diameter, Q will be equal to pi, let's say d2 over 3 times 2, like that, squared times v. So, this would mean that the rate of flow will be proportional to pi d d2, and then we're going to get a factor of 9, like so, times 2 times v. So in the first cross section we had a would have had a speed of uh, let's say this over here was v1 and uh, we had a certain diameter. When we introduced a factor of 3 down here we actually ended up getting a factor of 9 in the final equation uh, because we've squared everything. So this means that if the diameter, if the factor of the diameter decreases by a factor of 9, in order to keep V constant, this will have to increase by, so if this decreases by a factor of 9, this here will have to increase by a factor of 9 as well. So this kind of goes up by a factor of 9. So if the speed was originally 2, it is now going to be 18. Okay guys, so question 4. We have an object of mass m is suspended from a light string attached to a wall as shown in figure 2. So here is this object. The force f is horizontal. Okay, so f is pulling this way, mg is pulling that way, and the tension is acting along the diagonal at 45 degrees. So we have a twist to this situation, and the mass is replaced by double the mass, so twice mg. How do the forces f and t change? Well, the idea here is that if this suddenly becomes 2mg, so let's say that this vector becomes twice as big, so like so, let's make this a little bit longer. The only way that the angle will remain the same for the resultant vector between mg and the horizontal force f is if f also increases because if f doesn't increase the resultant force will no longer be at 45 degrees yeah so it will be uh, it will be uh, lower than that so like a lower angle and the only way that we can keep this at 45 degrees the resultant is if f doubles as well you could also do this problem by the process of elimination as well. So let me just demonstrate that. F and T remain the same. Well, that's not going to be the case because if F and T remain the same, and if MG goes uh, increases by a factor of 2, then you no longer have an equilibrium. The angle will change. So it's not going to be that. T halves. Well, if the, uh, if the lower forces uh, increase and the forces up here uh, lower, then you're definitely not going to have any equilibrium. 
uh, f doubles so as we said that's the correct answer if f halves once again you are not going to have an equilibrium the angle will change okay what is the next one in figure two what is the relationship between f t and m g okay well here is our tension. It's going to have a couple of components. So the uh, let me just uh, remove uh, those bits. Those are for illustration purposes only. So the uh, the tension is going to have a horizontal component, which is the opposite component. So uh, because of that, we know that uh, T sine of 45. That's this component here the opposite component um, this the magnitude of this will have to be equal to f so in other words the horizontal forces acting to the left have got to equal the horizontal forces acting uh, to the right so the correct answer is c and the last one how are the magnitudes of f T and MG related. We have F is equal to MG, F is smaller than MG, F is larger, F plus MG is equal to T. Uh, okay, well, F will definitely have to be equal to MG, so the correct answer is A. The reason for that is because this angle here is kept at 45 degrees, which turns out to be the key statement. So, unless the angle is not 45 degrees, uh, the, uh, the, the forces F and Mg will have to be equal to, um, to essentially balance out at that angle. So the correct answer is A. Okay, folks, well, um, this was, these were the uh, multiple choice questions from the part of the paper. Soon I'll be filming up the, uh, the entire paper, but starting with the multiple choice questions first. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.